of a cautionary tale, or a remorseful ruse, a reminder if you will, to be thankful for what it is you have, and to count your blessings, be careful what you wish for, you may just get it. <laughs> Was quite the every dreary night, gloomy and wet, one that would lead to impending doom and regret. Nevertheless, let us examine the lives of a son, husband, and wife, also known as the Whites. At present time, a moment of solace and rest. Father and son matching what's over a battle some chests by the fireplace. Dad made a great mistake that sealed his fate in revealed age that fate. Before the son could celebrate, there was a knock at the gate. Blazers could be around here so late. It was Salt and Major Morris who arrived at their steps. They were greeted by a face or expression of awe and stress. Good lord, Morris. Take shelter from the elements. They removed the soul jacket and got him settled in. Welcome, friend. What brings you here at this hour? Is there something troubling you? Your face looks rather dour. He told a tale of anguish and a journey through hell. And of a tiny trinket that was cursed with the spell. He pulled from his pockets a shriveled of fists, which prompted Mr. White to ask, What the devil is this? It's the wretched monkey's ball. Morris had replied, I'm red last possessed it and tragically he died. His life whipped away as I lay at his side. I knew it was the Paul's work by the look in his eye. A curse was cast upon the Paul merely to demonstrate what happens when people try to interfere with their fate. Now wait, said Mr. White. Exactly what does it do? It will grant three wishes for you that all will come true. You hold it in your right hand and then wish aloud. But Mr. White, tonight I'm afraid this isn't allowed. He tossed the ball in the flames. Mr. White couldn't believe it. Are you bloody insane? He exclaimed as he retrieved it. I'd advise you not to keep it. The consequences are dire. Do yourself a favor, friend. Throw it back into the fire. The wishes are nothing short of disastrous. Oh, come now, old chap. That sounds rather blasphemous. The premise is ridiculous. And condolences to your friend, but his death was a mere coincidence. What? Insolence, foolishness. Hmm. I'm through with this. I bid you all farewell. I want nothing more to do with this. And in this. the blink of an eye, Sergeant Morris had left about as quickly as he had appeared on their steps. The White family peered at the Paul curiously, which laid in no man's hand dubiously. They expected it studiously, every square inch, and realized that the Paul was mysteriously unclenched. How could they not notice? It was so suspicious. What other reason could exist besides the bestow wishes? For a moment, the Paul did cause some alarm. The thought occurred that it may be more than a mere charm, but they figured, what's the harm in making one more wish? So they decided they'd like to clear their entire mortgage. 200 pounds was a number that sounded fair. Wasn't too greedy, left not a shilling to spare. But the moment the old man's request had been uttered, the boy in his hands began to squirm, turn and stutter. It moved! He cried as it dropped to the ground. I doubt it did, father. We haven't gotten one pound. The two gathered around the crackling embers of fire, puffing on their pipes, and the younger one had to retire. Old man White sat and gazed at the blaze. Much to his dismay, he saw a Simeon's face. He gasped in fear and extinguished the flame and went to bed with the image remaining on his brain. He awoke the next day by the hue of the blue sky. Mr. White knew something was awry but couldn't prove why. He had a vision, an intuition, a premonition. In other words, you can say he had a sneaky suspicion. All the while, as if by mere chance or happenstance, a stranger approached your domicile. The well-dressed man looked rather as even approached the door of the White's residence. By the time Mr. White had actually arrived, he knew it was bad news by the look in the man's eyes. Good morning, sir. I have some grave news to report. Your only son, Herbert, was involved in an accident of sorts. He was cut short. How's his condition? Is my son okay? He's no longer in pain. Was all he could manage to say. The words lingered in the air seemingly for years, burning their ears and reconfirming their fears. Mrs. White was reduced to tears, a puddle of grief. Mr. White stood frozen in a heap of disbelief. The only son deceased, no longer must be living. They wish it had ignored Major Morris's misgivings. The man continued. Our company has provided a resolution. We would like to provide you all with monetary restitution. Mr. White hesitantly asked, How much is the amount? To which the man replied, A total of 200 pounds.